in it. So our first example is cyclopropane. So we know that for cycloalkates, the general formula is CnH2n, and prop tells us that we have three carbons. So we can show this two ways. First, you could do C3 because of the three, and then H would be six because it's two times the amount of carbon. Another way we could show this would be like this. Because the cycloalkanes are connected in a continuous end-to-end um, -end shape. A trick for drawing cycloalkanes is that the number, they usually take on a shape with that amount of sides. So that's a good way to remember. So our next example, we have one, two, three, four carbons. So four would be butte, and we know it's cyclo because it's in the end-to-end -end chain. So it would be cyclo, butte, and then ane for alkane. So the next example is methocyclohexane. So to draw that, we know hexane means six, and cyclo means they're in a continuous chain. So it would look something like this. And we have one branch, methyl, so we can put it anywhere, it doesn't matter where it goes because they're in a continuous chain. So our methyl is here, and our one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Our next example here, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons, so we know that our last part of our name will be cyclopentane. Now we've got two methyls on a one spot. So to write it, you would do one to show the position of one methyl, and one to show the position of the next methyl. And because you've got two, you would use the prefix di, so you would have dimethyl, and then cyclopentane for the chain. Okay. 